Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sit Down with Sid podcast, episode number two. Today, we have a very special guest all the way from New Delhi, India. Um, our guest has over 40 years of experience in pharmaceutical and healthcare industry. He's currently working as a director with Akimar Life Sciences, which is dedicated to marketing of orphan drugs. He's a passionate motivation speaker and human resource developer on soft skills. Besides that, he has also co-authored a book, Stress a Challenge, Let Us Enjoy It, with four, with four word by His Holiness the Nai Nama. Without any further to do, let's welcome Mr. Atul Gandotra. Sir, how is it going? Thank you for coming to the podcast. Thank you so much, Seth. Thank you very much. It's, it's very nice talking to you. And I am sure that perhaps I'll be able to do a good job of myself answering your questions. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I, I mean, your, I have gone over your resume, your experience, and it's just mind-boggling, you know, and uh, I'm really honored to have someone of your caliber come to this channel and spread your wisdom and knowledge to the people who are watching this podcast. Uh, so that being said, I just want to go, I just want to ask, um, like, about your family background, you know, so people, are, people know where you're from, um, you know, where you went to college, and so forth. Uh, Siddharth, it's like this. I belong to the uh, now Union Territory, Jammu and Kashmir of India. Okay. I am, we are three brothers and we are born to very well educated, disciplined, dedicated parents. My father was a geologist by education, but he served Indian Armed Forces. While my mother, our mother was an educationist and she was in teaching in the uh, Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. As regards the brothers are concerned, I have one younger brother. Incidentally, he settled in US and an elder brother who is in uh, Noida, which is part of NCR Delhi region. I am in Delhi now for the last almost a decade. As regards my education is concerned, my initiation of, uh, you know, as a student in education started from a remote village in Jammu and Kashmir, where my mother started her professional career as a teacher. But within two, three years of my education there, that is fourth standard, I traveled with my grandfather, my maternal grandfather who had come to see us. Uh, to meet us, to meet his daughter and his uh, grandchildren, I just came along with him, clung with him and came to Delhi. And I did my schooling in Delhi. What about, but, if, I, if I read it correctly, uh, you have your master's degree in botany with specialization yeah, in... Yeah, I come uh, to that. Because I have no. been shutting, you know, between Jammu and okay. Delhi. So after my formal schooling, I was, uh, I was quite young when I did my complete my schooling, 15 years and three months. So I was denied admission in college in Delhi because higher studies, because the bar was 16 years. Oh, okay. So, uh, so therefore I migrated to back to my hometown Jammu because there was no such barrier. And therefore I started my graduation there and went on doing my master's in botany with honors in cytogenetics, study of cell and genes that is way back in 1976 oh wow and after doing my masters i actually because we are from jnk and uh, most of the people they love to be in armed forces so after my masters i took a chance of being into indian air force and I went to a place known as Dehradun, which is in uh, India, in Delhi, near Delhi, for my interview. I was selected, recommended rather, for medical. But in medical, I failed because I had a, a problem of hyperhidrosis, excessive sweating from hands and feet. And that okay. was uh, a point of rejection, you know. So I was a bit dejected anyway, but then that is life. So I could not uh, fulfill my dream of being in armed forces, typical of what we people in Jammu and all that, we love it, you know. So then I thought that let me study a little more because uh, 
I always had a passion to have lots of degrees with me, you know, because my mother was mother mother was educationist, and we were in the habit of reading books. In the night, when all five of us will sleep, each one of us will have a book on our chest, and we sleep. So we were very passionate for books. So therefore, I joined, you know, in Delhi, I, in Delhi University, I joined a, a diploma in Russian degree in Russian language in the morning hours, and the evening I joined law. From Delhi University, and oh, daytime wow. I was just studying. That's all. So that took me around two years, and by that time I reached final of my law. I started applying for jobs, and I applied for a pharmaceutical company, two pharmaceutical companies. One is Johnson and Johnson, Johnson. from uh, yeah your favorite place, and another was Indian company Wokhart. Okay. So Wokhart invited me first for the training. So I ended up joining Wokhart as a medical rep. That is at grassroots level. And I joined the Wokhart at my hometown as a headquarter, Jammu. So I have a question. So I know yeah. you were involved in so many things. Mm. Like, how did you transition into the pharma industry? As you said, you got a job with Wokhart. Uh, like what was the story and the drive behind it that you knew? You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when this is I what I want to do. Delhi, when I was studying in Delhi, so my uncles they had opened a chemist shop, a retail pharmacy. Gotcha. And there, all these smart guys would come and representing various companies. That was an era when more of uh, multinationals from U.S. and uh, Germany, Europe, and the U.K. They were operational in India. There were not many Indian companies. So the guys would come. They will be highly, very well dressed with necktie and beautiful clothes. And they will have a very good communication. The, they, the way they will talk to the people and all. It was mesmerizing. So having lost my dream of getting into armed forces, I was infatuated. Actually, that was there in my back of my mind that I want to be smart. I want to be uh, good at communication. And therefore... I, that was second option, you know, which struck my mind. And that's how I applied for pharma industry and I got a job. So, so how do you possess? So my question is like, I see you have a great drive to do things. And when you put your mind to something, you do it. Where do you get that from in your family? That's my question. No, my family, when I say my family, I told you that I got influenced by my uncles because they had a chemist shop. And I would go to the chemist shop, that pharmacy, I'll go and these guys okay. will come. So I was also a small boy. That time I'll try to interact with them in whatever language I had known. And they would be very charming, you know, guys, very, very magnetic. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so, so that I got influenced. That is how, you know, my family was indirectly, you know, responsible for my getting influenced to get into pharma industry. Although when I started my career, my mother was very, very unhappy. Because she knew that uh, she that uh, you can be only a graduate and still get into this job. Why okay. the hell I carried on my further studies? So I committed to my mother that I assure you that I'll fulfill your aspirations and dreams that you have from me. And that is how, you know, when I started this job in Mokar, I right. worked like anybody's business, you know, very effective, very hardworking and highly result oriented. So I became a name in my state. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Uh, so I know everyone has role models in life, right? So um, I'm sure you must have. But if I was to ask you, who is your number one role model? Who will that be and why? See, my number one role model is our former late president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. From a very humble beginning, humble background, with hardly anybody to support, he worked very hard. He remained focused on his objectives. And uh, he's known as a missile man of India. And he rose to the highest office of such a big country, the largest democracy in the world. And he remained uh, glued to the ground. Very, very glued to the ground. Very simple. And he would be... Happy with anybody and everybody, anytime and every time. So no hang-ups. Absolutely no stiff neckness. Very simple guy. So very humble guy and very supportive. So he is my role model. Absolute role model. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, now going to your professional life. Um, Currently, you are a director at Akemar Life Sciences, um, yeah. which is responsible for uh, marketing orphan, orphan drugs. drugs. Could yeah. you could you elaborate a little bit more of that? Because uh, I mean, the concept is too catchy, and it kind of draws me and I'm sure people in to hear mm. your like feedback or input on this uh, project. Yes. Yeah. See, uh, Akemar Life Sciences is a startup. We it took off only in February 2019. In 2020 that's last year itself okay and uh, we are four directors of the company i am one of the directors and uh, one of my directors is a doctor medical doctor so we were discussing that uh, we want to get into our own pharma marketing so what do we do so i thought that because incidentally india is a generic market right so for every molecule there are hundreds of brands there's a crowded market and uh, therefore, uh, it's only the price of product and perhaps maybe some other kind of, you know, interest. They help the company to sell whatever they can. So we thought of that there is a small segment, segment of diseases which are very rare and segment of medicines, drugs, which are available for those uh, diseases, but nobody markets those because it does not make the whole preposition commercially viable to a big organization because of their own, you know, lots of uh, other expenses. Gotcha. So there's a need, there's a demand, but there's no supply. There's a gap in demand and supply. And there is not even a single company in India or perhaps anywhere which is dedicated only to orphan drugs. So this was a great opportunity that we will do small business, but we'll do quality business. We'll deliver what is required, maybe even for a handful, because every life matters. So there yeah, are people true. who suffer from these orphan diseases. They are known as orphan disease only because there's a disease, but there's nobody to look after them. So it's an orphan disease. There's a drug, but nobody is there to market them. That's an orphan. So therefore the word orphan attached to drug and the disease. So we so, thought so of it and... Uh, because I worked in pharma industry for more than four decades. So we have very good, you know, network with medical professionals. Network, when I say good relationship, good association within India and outside India, including, of course, uh, US and uh, Africa and parts of Europe. Because I worked all those places. And so we have good association with medical fraternity. So I discussed with uh, many of my friends amongst medical professionals. And they were quite happy that uh, Gandhotra, yes, you are thinking very right because sometimes we have, we know that there's a drug, but it's not available and our patients, they poor fellows, they die because most of these orphan diseases are life-threatening diseases. So that is how we decided that we will go for marketing only of domestic marketing to begin with of orphan drugs. We'll do small volumes, but because we do not have any overheads, so we'll be able to make it a viable preposition with smaller business. And if we have large number of products, then even the volumes will go up, you know, volume of business will go up. And even if the margins of uh, profit are very vapor thin, we are not bothered at all because too many vapors, when you keep together, they become thick, you know, like sedimentation, sedimentary right. rocks. Right, right, right. So that's how we went into, we started off Akamar Life Sciences into our permit. So if I understand correctly, so you want to start in India and then expand it to other countries such as Africa? Of course, of, of, course, of course, of course. It's a very challenging task because it's very difficult to get the API. API is, you know, the pharmaceutical ingredient. Okay. Active pharmaceutical ingredient or drug, very difficult to get because not many companies manufacture that. On top of it, when you get API, it's very difficult to get a manufacturer for finished product because the quantities that you get asked for are very small. So very big awesome. challenge. And on top of it, you want the best quality, international best quality, so that you, know, you are giving what is you know, uh, required by the patient. So it's a challenge, but then, okay, we are born to accept challenges only. And I'm sure you're driven to make this into a successful venture down the line. Uh, hopefully, yes. We came out with first product in... Uh, August last year, but then Corona has taken a very heavy toll 
because of corona you know patients from all other diseases they suffered like anybody's business That's medical true. professionals stopped seeing the patients and all that so uh, we we were not able to get that kind of you know take off that we were looking at so now we are waiting for the situation to be little better because the numbers are going down corona patients numbers are going down in india and uh, patients have other other diseases they started visiting doctors so hopefully another 5 6 months down the line we'll be able to you know click with our first product and then we have another four five products in pipeline you know i i personally feel that the cause of your company is very enriching and something that a lot of people uh businesses and consumers will be willing to support you know it's so it's a high social bias you know highly we have a high social bias uh because what we are looking at is not uh, uh, somehow making money but we are looking at a little money as a reward for our work for the work. mankind that's all beyond that nothing yes so so i i read that back in june of 2020 uh akemar life sciences came up with a product known as vidi mask right which is a protective ocular respirator developed in israel do you want to touch base on that for a few minutes uh see we had uh, because of this corona what happened because as i shared with you that we were our ph- ph- pharmaceutical business that did not take off the way we wanted there was an initial take off and then it stopped so we thought that we must do something during this corona period also so we laid hands on a company from israel with this mask and uh, we tied up with them for distribution in india uh, but somehow what has happened is that see mask has become a very generic kind of a product once again mandatory there was a time when we, we will hardly make mask and today we are exporting mask as a country because yeah. everybody is and anybody is making an n95 mask is become the most common so now we are less into very mask but we are more into uh, n95 mask made in india approved by us fda also and okay. we are doing that in indian hospitals right now indian hospitals so we are more into n95 mask and uh, not that very mask because that was little expensive proposition and okay. medical fraternity you know would not spend um, that somehow i must say that medical fraternity is miser when it comes to spend their money for their own safety but they are they are not at all miser when it comes to treat the patient with uh, any any kind of expenses the patient may have to incur so therefore we had to, we were left with no choice but to carry on with our uh, work on n95 mask for which we are doing fairly well we have tied up with few big private sector hospitals in india and we are supplying them as per the orders and all that but again that is this is not a uh, real business that we are in this was purely because we already have some expenses as a company correct we have an office correct. we took the licenses we have an office we have to maintain that we have uh, definitely you know reckoning expenses so therefore to and on top of it there is again there was a sudden spurt in the demand for uh, sanitizers and masks so therefore because we are in industry so we thought that let us get into but that is not our business at all our business shall remain focused only on into our products okay okay uh, that's great to know that's great to know that's a great cause actually uh, yeah so i know uh, you have worked in top companies going back from 1990 till date uh, my question is of all the executive jobs experience that you had which one would you considered as the best in terms of learning and personal growth and development and why yeah yeah i i it's a very 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 important question a very nice question you know see i loved i loved myself to be at the uh, see on the seat of profit center head okay that is the head of the company wherein you got to be very well versed with different facets of business including production quality control finance human resource development marketing selling all those aspects you know and then you have to set objectives it's not that somebody gives objectives and you have to achieve that you have to set objectives 
as per that you have to you know uh, identify the all kind of manpower in various facets of this business that i have shared with you so your learning curve goes up you know it is perpendicular at 90 degree it goes straight it zooms on top of it you are unstable to yourself so you are putting a challenge to yourself i think there is nothing uh, better than putting a challenge to yourself and working to achieve that then because you own that completely there is a ownership 100% ownership so i love to be at the hands of total business which i did with wokart abert and cadilla and of course yes. morpen four companies yes i was profit center head with them i enjoyed that on top of it by virtue of that position and the kind of uh, work that you have you have to meet lot of important people from whom you can learn a lot you have to travel uh, various countries and you learn the basic you know nonsense of business in various cultures various geographies and all that and uh, so therefore you learn a lot and that is what i loved a lot i liked a lot i was passionate i remain passionate like that now also well, that's that's so inspiring for people like us to see you kind of you know cheering us on and uh, with your enthusiasm uh, i also want to touch base on uh, another topic uh, you had your own business so after being in the corporate world uh, yeah. you went ahead with your own business venture i think back in 2001 if uh, if i 2003 am... 2003 late 2003, 2003. Okay so yeah. the reason i want to touch base on that is because my next question after this is kind of tied in so so do you yeah. want to tell us like what was the venture the outcome just brief uh, you know few sentences yeah. you know and then i want to yeah. ask you a question that will kind of tie in see in 2003 late 2003 i set up my own company pharmaceutical company that was a company with the reach across the country india so it was a, a national player big company i started that and uh, again it was uh, in partnership because uh, it required lots of money and all that so i didn't have that much of it to invest into so i had partners and we started off it took off very nice in fact uh, there was lot written about my company in uh, indian uh, media including business uh, media and all that and uh, there was lot of you know appreciation but somehow you know within uh, 11 months of uh, initial initial uh, uh, rather functioning of the company uh, my partners thought that perhaps uh, because i was the uh, hem, i was the hands of affairs being a chairman and of course having that kind of background of working with some of the top notch corporates from grassroots level till the profit center head so they were feeling little uncomfortable so they wanted to you know separate so once they express i said okay because if they have spoken to me about separation and they want to take over the company it might be they might be mulling it in their mind for a very long time so once they have opened up there's no point in you know talking to them and uh, counseling them and all that so i said okay so gave up the business uh, i gave up so i came out of the company and unfortunately these guys were not able to take care of the company because uh, they did not have that kind of you know experience expertise and experience so they drowned the whole business and uh, in the process i lost all whatever i had earned in my life uh, i lost that so i came on the it was just like you know an aircraft uh, losing connection with the atc and uh, you find it is crashed so i crashed that's all so i crashed and uh, that is how you know uh, i thought no what do i do so i went into one of my friends is a uh, former president of indian medical association dr vinay agarwal so he wanted to start a big hospital so he had told me that atul why don't you join me so i joined him and that is how we set up a big hospital and i became a man from pharmaceutical to healthcare so that's what it is so i had to struggle a lot Uh, but then struggle is part of life uh, if there is no struggle the life is uh, no good it becomes sedentary it becomes yeah. sedate it there is there, it, it 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 does not uh, help you to there's no thrust to move forward in life so you cannot excavate your innate potential you know unless there's a challenge you know there's a crisis so crisis made me 
little much stronger, you know, much better off. And a man of complete man of healthcare industry, including pharmaceutical. So, I mean, it must be very tough on you. I mean, to build yourself with so much hard work over the years and then to yeah, lose it, was it very all. Tough. It was definitely very tough because uh, I had my children who were uh, in school and they had always seen their father moving up, 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 up and up. And suddenly there's a crash. I had to sell off everything that I owned, you know, my home, my all possessions. I had to set off, sell off. And I was absolutely on the road with uh, so much so that many times I'll walk 10, 20 kilometers for an interview also. So, uh, but then, the, okay, that's life. Uh, you have not come to this planet with any commer uh, commercials in your pocket and you will not go with that. So whatever I had earned, I had earned from here applying my mind. So I, I thought that what I have lost is only, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the, these uh, physical assets, but not my mental abilities. So I'll use my mental abilities. So during this, that phase of this high distress, I wrote a book on stress, which you just mentioned in my introduction. And I approached Holiness Dalai Lama out of blues. And he was kind enough to give his foreword. So I became an author. Imagine if but for the Paul, I would not have written a book. So I'm lucky. So, so, so if I understand correctly, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong in saying this. So you kind of took that authorship as a stress, as a reliever to kind of, as a stress reliever, kind of, you know, as a tool to excel and pick up yourself back again in life. You just uh, kind so of correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just want to bring up a couple of things from the book. So your book is named as Stress a Challenge, Let Us Enjoy It. Um, yeah. There was something that I read in this book, which I want to share. Um, mm. And I would ask for your input on that. You had mentioned stress is a catalyst, a stimulus, mm. and an opportunity for innovation and progress. I mean, I get goosebumps yeah. just by saying this. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, what, do you, what do you say to people, I mean, in this highly competitive, stressful environment all across the globe, like how do you tell people, how do they cope up with stress? Yes, very, very, very appropriate question for not only present times, but even the past times also, because right from the beginning, you know, uh, I, uh, I heard people are under heavy stress and all that. Then what happened is that I tried to excavate the meaning of stress from various dictionaries and all that. Earlier used to have dictionaries, there was no Google and all that. So I came across a dictionary of my mother. Uh, and in that the word stress was defined in Hindi language as Shakti. Power, and Shakti right? is a very powerful, positive word. Okay. And I found that, then I started mulling over it, that if it is Shakti, then uh, how can I, uh, you know, give certain examples to somebody if I talk about it as Shakti? Then I realized that if there was no stress of distance, the wheel would not have been there. To cover distance faster, there was a stress. How can I go so far up? So somebody used that stress as a catalyst and invented wheel. Very interesting. Right. Very interesting. So then I found that, but for stress, the Stone Age man would not have become modern man because everything that we had done as of now in terms of any kind of innovation, invention, discovery, and all that, including all technology of modern day, it is all an offshoot of stress. A stressor coming from stress, and some people who are very positive-minded, they take it as a challenge, and they convert that stress into an opportunity, and create, you know, like today, me and you are talking over Zoom. Right. I am sitting in New Delhi. You are in US. Who could have thought of it? But then there was a need felt, innate need felt by people. Okay, how can we talk to each other when we are so far off? So Marconi came. How can we see each other when we talk off? So all these Zoom and face uh, time and uh, God knows so many things have come. How can we talk to our people when they are very far off? So telephone came. So uh, if, uh, see in India, we use a lot of air conditioners because it's a tropical country, very hot. So there was a stress of heat 
and some people developed air conditioners. So you cannot think of even one product or one service which is not an offshoot of stress taken as a challenge by some people who never had an attitude of giving up. They had an attitude of never say die attitude. I will do that. We will convert this challenge into opportunity. So stress is, an, uh, is a trigger. So therefore, they, I have defined stress as distress and eustress. Distress is when you cave in. See, like I give another example. We talk about blood pressure. Right. Imagine if there is no blood pressure, the heart will not be able to throw blood in the head against gravitational pull. So nature has given pressure. Right? Yes. That pressure causes stress on the inner lines of veins. This is known as total peripheral resistance into cardiac output is hypertension, uh, is blood pressure. But when the blood pressure goes up, it is bad, goes very high hypertension. Like suddenly there's a volcano is burst and people are not getting any time to run away and all that. There's a problem. Or perhaps right. maybe the right now the jungle fires in California, they have uh, gone beyond the control of man as of as on date. So, okay, then it is a hypertension or distress. But then if still people are fighting there, no, they have not given up. So they are huge stressed, positively charged out of stress. So that is my definition, understanding of stress. To me, stress is absolutely essential to survive and to progress. That's a, that's a great uh, outlook you have. Uh, towards stress. The reason I brought this up also was, as you know, what's going on with this global pandemic since last year, um, mm -hmm. people suffering with depression, highly stressed, you know, losing jobs, uh, uh, tight finances and everything. Uh, yeah. so like, so like, I mean, what's, as you mentioned, your message, stress is a catalyst, right? So like, mm -hmm. how do you help these people overcome the negative thought, like, like, what is it that can change the frequency of the mindset, right? How do you change stress to you stress, right? Or distress, correct? So, so what is, what is your message to people who are in a tough situation today? People who are listening to this podcast and are going through things in life that is hard for them to cope with. What is, what is that positive speech you want to give to them related to stress? I would not be able to give any speech, but I will say only one thing that every day is followed by night, but every night is also followed by day. That's beautiful. Very well said. If sun rises, sun sets, sun rises also. Right. So we have to be hopeful. Those who will give up, they will perish. Those who will not, you know, even in disease, even in COVID patients, or patients who are very severely ill because I'm from healthcare, it has been found that people who have a desire and will to survive, they survive against all odds. And those who do not have, despite of Thank the best much. facilities, they go. So this is a night, it will go, sun will rise, why give up? That's, that's, that's beautiful. Very, very well said, as very inspiring. I, am, I have suffered in the last one and a half year, as I shared with you, I started off my company, Akamar Life Sciences. I yet to make money, but I spent lots of money, whatever I had. I am not a pensioner. I am a private man from private sector. I don't get any pension, monthly pension or any social security we don't have in India. I am surviving. I am happy. Very simple as that. So as long as you are able to meet your basic needs of food and shelter, at least you should be thankful to the God that you are better than so many. When you look at that, that you are better than so many, that should be a trigger for you to carry on your battle and fight. And you will definitely come up. And once again, you will be like that sun, which glows to its glory in the mid-afternoon. That's impressive. Wow. I love it. I really love it. Thank you. Thank you I so mean much. It. I, whatever I'm saying, say it. I mean it. I live my life like that. I am not talking anything because I want to be goody-goody and all that so that people feel very happy about it. I live my life exactly like that. 
so i have no issues absolute no problem depression why depression what for you had that pandemic 100 years back also we have a history that talks about right. it imagine the people who survived there are many who survived you see the holocaust of second world war where uh, hitler had done what people survived out of it right right they survived and they survived and they thrived so uh i also know that you are a passionate motivational speaker i mean your passion yeah. flows through your conversations it's it's clearly it's very obvious you know in a good way and you are a human resource developer on soft skills uh yeah. could you elaborate to people who are watching these who do not understand uh technical words like that in a simple manner like when you say human resource developer on soft skills what is it oh. what are soft skills etc right 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 right, right. Yeah. see uh, whatever we do when i say we we are talking about human beings any organization any society any country any city this is all formed of human beings so human being human remains the most man remains the most important resource for all these entities right so right. man is supreme in whatever man is doing right and incidentally each one of us have same number of neurons same shape and same functioning of neurons in our head it's all a question of how you utilize those neurons and that is where the thought process psychological attributes they come in to play a role we call it as attitude isn't it yes attitude is not physiological uh, attitude is not anatomical attitude is not physiology even it is only thought right which is felt attitude is that so all of us are equally potential we all human beings are equally potential but to make use of that potential and to excavate that potential the innate potential that we have we need sometimes we need people from outside you we call it as guru the guru word from india hindi is become a dictionary word now it's used all over the world guru it's in oxford dictionary so when you reach even top your guru becomes god you know so we look for some support from outside and even we don't look there is some support which is essential for us to bring about a change in our perception and our response thereof you know so to me motivation is nothing but being a stirrer you have sugar in the glass and you have water but it is not stirred so if it is not stirred water remains you know sugarless fika but if you stir it then you can feel That's the sweet. sweet so so i am a stirrer motivational speakers are only stirrers beyond that nothing because you have everything or we are like you know duster there is some dust and we clean that beyond that nothing right your analogy as is so regards, simple but it is still so effective <laughs> in your communication as regards soft skills are concerned soft skills are not taught actually in many courses you be it medicine or engineering or uh, your uh, uh, what they call it as uh, uh, software technology or hardware or any kind of soft skills are like communication ability leadership you know listening right so these are soft skills these are again wheels you know which are able to carry you fast forward you know the communication communication how do i interact with people how do i express myself so there are ways you know which are very important to be learned how to communicate language is only a part of it body language plays a very vital role likewise listening so if you have asked me a question and i have not allowed you to complete that i have responded press my response may not be anywhere near to the question that you had in your mind 
but if i was able to listen to you what your question fully i would be able to respond in a manner which is befitting leadership what kind of leadership hitler was a great leader undoubtedly he is he misuses leadership you know yeah and uh, created it's, all kind of hell on this planet but leadership is brought is, that in my family in my family of four me my wife and my daughters i am the leader so how i behave how i carry them together what are the objectives i set for the whole family it will have an important impact on the making of my children and responses of my wife so if i am a good leader i am quite likely to bloom otherwise i'll bloom so so uh, these are the soft skills that i talk to people discuss with them and we all need even i need sometimes a dose on all these soft skills from those who are still better off than me and who have bigger exposure than me so i learn and i share i learn and i share so so what do <laughs> so you think about model huh so, so so my question is what do you think makes a good leader what is the attribute and qualities of a good leader because it's it the reason i bring this up is because i have a friend um and i met him yesterday and he's actually interviewing for a job and yeah. he was stuck by a question he had two interviews one of them went pretty well the other one he said it didn't go well so i'm like why he's like because i was asked this question what is a quality of a good leader and he said i could not answer he's been in the business he's been in the pharmaceutical business in united states he works okay. for abbott with oh. almost 40 years of experience and he could not answer that question so i would love to hear your answer on that uh, leader is one who leads one who leads and leads where leads to certain objectives what are those objectives which are very clearly spelt and discussed with the people with the team of that leader leads so a good leader is a is an individual who leads the people by clearly spelling out the objectives by having interactions and discussions based on that utilizing the individual potential of his, each team member and supporting them backing them up and checking in between the kind of progress which is taking place so that sometimes you are too you are sleeping so it may be a case of too late you know so therefore the leader is up and awaken and is in know of the progress and leader is one who also you know many times who also participate so personally i like leaders who are like playing the captains and not fence sitters fence sitter is a leader who just sits on the fence and finds fault so he is a fault finder playing captain is one who himself can play and then only he is able to guide and direct if i do not know what is the game i cannot lead anybody so a leader is a uh, what they call it as playing captain who has clear objective very clearly discussed with his team members based on discussions a whole strategy has been worked out the planning has been worked out then action has been worked out and then after the actions have started there is a intermittent what they call it as the uh, check check back checking back the kind of progress and what direction so, so in a very nutshell very... i am talking about leadership other leadership is a very very big subject because right. leadership is different in different kind of situations yeah because everyone has their own meanings and definition no, of not like that situation like say example i have a new recruit in the company at grassroots level he doesn't know abc of the company right right so i have to direct him i have to be a directive leader not a discussing leader there are no there is no room for that person to ask me who why where when no i have told you this please go and shoot there that's all beyond that nothing that is directive leadership for a beginner beginner so that is how the leadership keep changing from situation to situation it is directive it is coaching leadership it is counseling leadership and then there is leadership which is delegating 
which I shared with you in the beginning. But leader has never to keep close eye, and he has to be helicoptering. He has not to be at in the stars. He has to be helicoptering, you know, so that he has a bird eye view of the whole situation. He is not inside the situation, gotcha. but when required, he is able to jump in. Right. Uh, I have a couple of more questions for you. Uh, very. So, like, what way do you see yourself three years pro from now? Uh, in a professional setup, what is what goals do you have in the next See, three to five years? Let me be very let me be very clear with you because I've uh, been working for the last now more than forty five years, forty four years to be very precise, right? And uh, I had certain dreams to achieve, which I achieved as far as profession is concerned. I wanted to be at the hems of a top notch company. And incidentally, Abbott from US was one where I was a top man, you know, right? Right. So I did that, and I learned a lot. Now I have developed a very good, you know, social circle all over the world. So I want to and live on my association with those people. I want to travel. I want to meet the people. I want to go to places which I had gone to or which I have not gone to. So as far as profession is concerned. I I am only very keen that my Akamar Life Sciences should be a success. We reach, we set up around ten twelve products in the coming three years because we have to do a lot of work on bicycle and studies and all that is time consuming. And uh, then I hand over the baton to my other directors and come out of it and uh, enjoy my life, meeting my friends, meeting my people, and of course talking to them. What I am talking about my motivational lectures or soft skills and all that. So it's purely more of a philanthropic activities which are uh, very in my head right now more than commercial activities. Okay. Yeah. So if if someone wants to seek you for as a motivational speaker, uh, yeah. how can they contact you? Uh, they, they I have my email ID. They can send me a communication on that. Okay. And uh, I'm going to present that in the description of the video as well. Right. So, I said I'm going to also provide your email yeah. information in the description yeah. of the video, yeah. so people yeah. can reach out to you and they yes. and probably LinkedIn as well, which is one of the top yeah. professional uh, yeah. social platforms. Right, right, right. So they can contact me. I'll be very happy to talk. I love people actually, you know, because I I I have again a basic philosophy that whatever profile I have, it's only because of people. I'm a father because of children. They are outside me. I'm a husband because of wife. She is outside me. I'm a friend because of friends who are outside me. I'm a leader because of followers who are outside me. I'm a follower because of leaders who are outside me. Even to be an enemy, I have to have some people, you know. So in every facet of my life, my profile, my identity is because of others. So I love people, you know, because more I associate myself with people, more my identity goes bigger. And who doesn't want a deal mange more? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'll be happy. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I have really enjoyed this. Uh, I want you to, uh, if there is something you want to say to the people who are watching this, uh, as a closing remarks, uh, I would love to have you speak on that. Mm -hmm. What is your audience yeah. to the younger people? What is your what is your uh, message to the younger people, to the people who are watching this podcast? Uh, what's your takeaway? You know, what should be their takeaway? Uh, my, my take is life is very precious. We are lucky to be born in homo sapiens, human beings on this planet. It's very precious. So therefore, every one of us must live our life to the fullest every moment. Because one doesn't know what is happening next moment. There's a lot of uncertainty. You know, we nobody has been able to, even Nostradamus has not been able to spell out very clearly about the future. So nobody knows about it. So let us live in present, make best of it. And that is what will keep you happy. And if you are happy, you are rich. If you are not happy, you are poor. So try Excellent. to be happy. Live your present. Live in your present. Live to the best. And don't bother about, don't live for the others. You know, when you live for others, you have no profile. You have no identity. Live for yourself. Love yourself. And when you love yourself, when you live for yourself, then you know the art of, carrying people along with who will help you to accomplish your objectives.
as i said that you are your identity is because of others so please ensure that you are good to every human being around because they are the ones who are going to make you feel happy in whatever you want to do so live your moment life present happy sure this has been just absolutely brilliant stimulating and interacting conversation i had with you i want to so thank nice. you i want to thank you on behalf of the people watching the podcast on behalf of myself for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us to share your wisdom and knowledge and uh, i really appreciate i really appreciate you for doing this you know it's 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 very personal and uh, uh, i mean i'm just grateful to you you know for being here on this podcast thank you very much Sid. thank you very much i am honored that perhaps uh, you saw me the right fit to be on your podcast you know so thank you very much and uh, once again it was nice talking to you okay thank you thank you thank you bye bye